So I thought the, the breakout session was a, a really successful. I noticed uh, you know, a lot of engaged discussions. One of the things that I think uh, particularly stood out is when the break happened, I, I told folks about the break, there's still a discussion continuing, and that's always a good sign. Um, so we had six tables downstairs, six full tables downstairs, and eight full tables upstairs um, on these discussions uh, through, the, through the various um, use cases. And um, what we did is uh, tried to distill about 45 pages of, uh, of notes that were taken from these breakout sessions into a few nine slides. So um, if you go to the folder, the main folder, you'll find all that data. Um, thanks to Lynn. Where's Lynn? There she is. She did a great job. What she did is she took the, each of the sections, discovery, registry, and, and distribution and access, and combined them into one document at this top root folder. So you can see where, the, where these um, summaries came from. And then also these Google Slides are in that top folder. So if you want to dig in uh, deeper, all that's available. I also wanted to thank Ken and, and Bob. Is Bob around? Um, for facilitating. Oh, sorry, there he is. And um, and also um, Bob and uh, Jay Perlman for helping me summarize the notes. So um, with that, I'll get on to the first uh, summary. Um, for resource discovery, we asked what type of resources. And of course, the different use cases came up with um, some different answers for this, but there are also common uh, themes um, in terms of things like the, the, the types of data, pre-event data to kind of give a, give a background and context. Um, and, and a baseline, the in-event data and the post-event data, um, the, also the, the codes that were that were used. And, a, and an interesting one that came up a few times was some way to identify subject matter experts uh, that, that could be used as a resource in the scientific analysis. Of course, other things like data uh, repositories, uh, publications and results, um, actual instruments that, that might be used to help this science case, um, and computing resources. And then, uh, then some uh, interesting topics around social media, especially in terms of some of these hazardous events that people are tweeting about. And, you know, so that would be a, a new uh, kind of resource, uh, relatively new. Um, not surprisingly, the way that most people find things are a Google search or well-known large repositories uh, that they know about. Um, in some cases, people are using faceted search portals. Um, and then there's a there's a, a few comments about this uh, word of mouth at conferences to find resources that that help their um, their uh, analysis. Um, and then there are also some data that that people wish they could have, but they're proprietary and not available to the public. Um, the, I thought it was interesting to read the, the descriptions of how people would like to search um, something very very simple, a natural language query that then gets translated into a semantic query. We know the challenges of that, but that's the kind of um, power that uh, the, the folks would like out of a search. Um, but yet, they'd also like some kind of a qualitative uh, assessment of their of their resources. So someone said a combination of Google for the search and Yelp for the assessment, which I thought was, was neat. Um, and everybody's, you like to have one place to, to do this, a sort of a centralized uh, search engine. <coughs> And then they wanted to search by the topic, by the temporal uh, domain, and the spatial domain uh, as well. Um, everybody uh, had good comments about linked data. Uh, you know, having controlled you know, uh, vocabularies was important, especially to faceted searches. Um, uh, they, they, they felt that uh, finding these particular domain experts, because we all speak different languages, if you're looking for a domain expert in, in a if that it's outside of your domain, you may not use the right search terms. So again, the proper uh, semantics and linked uh, uh, data you know, comes up there. And then um, the temporal and spatial information was also helpful for uh, for linked data. I had to shrink things on this one, sorry. Um, but uh, uh, of course, the barriers, uh, uh, the obvious one is funding, um, but also too many standards, right? Or too many standards for for um, uh, you know, locating that data. Poor metadata, uh, we heard that throughout this discussion. I think that's a real key. I noticed, uh, for example, in, in my group, when we implemented DOIs, all of a sudden we realized the inefficiencies of our metadata. We're going to do this, we're, we're having the same issue with semantic data, that our metadata is not complete enough. So that's also the case in discovery. Um, and then there are some, uh, some uh, barriers that happen just because of the event itself, like communications uh, uh, problems. Uh, they folks felt they needed more automation 
and again, a one-stop uh, shop, uh, you know, a simple uh, one place to go to do searches of both temporal and spatial um, uh, scales. And then uh, this, uh, we also heard, is, is a lack of data persistence when, when the funding goes away. Um, we asked, should this uh, discovery metadata be regularly assessed, and if so, how? So there's some automated means of doing this to crawl and, and find dead links and, and remove them. Uh, crowdsourcing came up many times uh, for improving and assessing metadata. Um, and then, you know, some kind of an automated way to uh, check and, and quality seal metadata was, was another item there. In terms of uh, what other areas of need, I thought one interesting one was this uh, notion of uh, what they called, they called bundling, I'm, I call it predictive bundling, which is essentially um, you've looked for a data set, the, the, the system would be able to suggest data sets that you also might be interested in. Um, I've heard that discussed over the years uh, here at Earth Cube. Um, so you know, knowing what, they're, what a person's looking for, that they wouldn't have to search too far to find other uh, relevant data sets, perhaps. Um, workflows uh, as part of a discovery uh, service came up. Um, more communication with inter between the portals. And again, that would mean you know, people could go to one spot and then all the portals could, you know, could be searched. That kind of, kind of notion. And then um, somebody noted that these um, conversations, individual, conf individual conversations at conferences and such, may work on a small scale, but when you're when you're trying to do something, especially out of your domain or something that's a really large problem, that kind of a, a way doesn't scale uh, as well. And then you know, cloud source, sourcing came up again. So that's kind of the summary for the resource discovery area. In resource registry, what types of resources are very similar to what was discovered? So uh, data repositories, um, data sets uh, of, of a whole variety, like I spoke about before. Um, some kind of collection uh, information you know, to be registered. The, the scientific workflow, this came up in registration, but not, uh, not uh, um, discovery. Um, I'm going to have to move along pretty quickly. So I'll, I'll let folks read these, but uh, a couple other things is, uh, again, computing, publications, and, um, and instruments came up in, in the registry component as well. Um, again, the, the, the current place that people uh, you know, register things are with these large repositories that folks are familiar with. Um, uh, also, descriptions in the published papers is, is something that happens uh, commonly today. Um, and then uh, we, we talked about a, a centralized system versus crawl uh, registration. And um, a, a really good point somebody made was don't create a centralized system unless it can be maintained. So make sure that, accurate, that the registry information is accurate. Your um, registration is only as good as the content you know, that's within it. And um, every, every uh, resource should have a global link entry system identifier. And I think the community is behind that uh, as well in most cases. Um, for, as far as the Earth Cube architecture connecting to existing registries, use the FAIR principle. Um, you know, have the ability to query by a repository ID. Um, the, the validity and accuracy of the registry metadata uh, should be assessed. The answer was yes. Some one one group said no, and the question was kind of dumb. There was only one. Um, so it's you know checking the uh, you know frequently checking the uh, the accuracy of, of that metadata in an automated way, not manually if possible. Um, in terms of what other needs there are, uh, you know, it was documenting um, which are open source and which are proprietary, and soliciting um, you know, feedback from what they'd like to see. And here, here again, we see this notion of Yelp as as some way to assess um, the uh, the quality, you know, crowdsource uh, the, the quality, let's say. Um, for distribution and access, uh, Jay broke these up into particular use cases. So. Um, the, the, the distribution and access for emergencies were a bit different than some of the other um, use cases. But uh, for the emergency one, you need real-time data. You may not need real-time data in some of this post-analysis work. Um, but of course, uh, you know, it's models, experts. It's, it's essentially the, the same things that we're, that we're talking about in the discovery section. Um, but, but also um, the types of data being both in situ and remote uh, sensing and, and model data. So these are very similar. The, the additions uh, on the coral uh, topic were human impacts and things like that, uh, which, which was a little bit different. Um, let's see, real-time data for emergency 
uh, situations again is one of the barriers. Um, uniformity of formats. So I think the, the message, and I think it's a pretty obvious one, is consolidating the number of formats that we have would be helpful to the community that we have or some kind of a way to uh, make that transparent. And then again, a one-stop shop for the, the access of, uh, and distribution of, of data. Uh, transformation and brokering is, yes, in, uh, useful. Uh, it needs to include subsetting, uh, transformation such as regridding, remapping, um, and then chaining of data. Um, as, as far as uh, we figured this number four would be a little bit controversial, but um, I, I think the, the way it came out was pretty good, which is, uh, yes, people felt that at least one copy of NSF funded data should be in an NSF repository. We have those in each of our, our science domains. But of course, uh, in order to do that, some of the, the folks that are collecting this data need uh, the time and the, and the, and the, uh, the money to uh, prepare them and properly and then, you know, move them to these uh, archives that require more metadata than, than maybe uh, a less formal um, mechanism might need. Uh, of course, sometimes the size and volume of the data is a barrier to that. And then um, there's a point uh, here, too, that not all uh, data come from NSF or its repositories. And uh, that's true. And the, the, the question is mostly about NSF. Um, for uh, examples of methods that have worked thus far, there's a few here, Scopius, Threads, GitHub for code, um, Data One, um, and, and then this point about the, the need, the systems need to uh, couple metadata with data for co context and machine readable um, access of, uh, of it. And then on the last uh, topic, what are some of the other areas? Uh, intellectual property and legal access to data. That again came up previously about proprietary versus open source. Um, something about sustainability uh, for these um, for these um, data assets and a business model for that. Um, provenance information and then a comprehensive um, registry for data. So please feel free to look at this again. I didn't realize how that that time. Oh, sorry. Are you are you taking this slide? Yeah. Oh, I should mention the. The, yeah, the slideshow is in, the, in that top directory, which I'll, I'll, I'll list again. Can I uh, pull out the Is that right? Like, is everybody, is anyone else having trouble with this? Maybe, maybe I cut and pasted it wrong. Has anyone tried that one? No, it worked. Okay. 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 So, one thing I do want to say is this information will be used in the architecture refinement workshop to provide a context for the needs that the community has. Remember, I mentioned that. So, that's the next step. Okay.